Hello and welcome to DirectX 11 Tutorial 8. In this tutorial we are going to begin the initialization of DirectX. The first thing we are going to do is create filters for our graphics files. So let's create a new filter in the headers, call it graphics, and let's create a new filter in the source files and call it graphics. Let's go ahead and create our graphics header. And let's create our graphics CPP. Let's go up to the top to show all files and create a folder for our graphics files. And now we are going to move those files we just made to the graphics folder. Alright, we can uncheck show all files. And go back to our source CPP. Now right here in our source CPP we have where we are linking to the DirectX libraries in the DirectX toolkit. We are going to take that out and we are going to do that in our graphics. Let's go to the graphics header put that in. And we are also going to include D3D11. To initialize DirectX, we need a few different things. The first thing we will need is a D3D11 device. The device is essentially what we will be using to create our buffers. We will need a D3D11 device context. And while we are rendering, we will use the device context to set uh, different resources for rendering. So for example, if we are rendering uh, two different textures, we will use the device context to set our shader resource to one texture. We will draw that texture. And then we will use a device context to set our shader resource to another texture and then draw that texture. The swap chain is a bit more involved and I'm sure there are much better videos out there explaining this. I don't want to spend too much time, but essentially the swap chain will be used to swap out our frames while we are rendering. So there are a few different ways to use it, but the way we are going to use it is where we are discarding the frame. So I'm going to try to demonstrate this in the simplest way possible. For our swap chain, we're going to have a front buffer and a back buffer. One of these buffers will be presented on the screen while the other one is drawn to. So let's say that currently on the screen we see this smiley face. This is frame one. Then while we uh, still see the smiley face, down on frame two, we are going to be, you know, drawing the smiley face. And then once this is ready, we are going to take frame one and we are going to discard it and swap in frame two. So now we are looking at frame two, and then frame one, that uh, that buffer we were using, we are going to use that buffer for frame three. So now it's cleared out, and we are going to start drawing our next picture. And once that is drawn, we are going to uh, discard frame two and swap in frame three. So hopefully that kind of makes sense what it's doing. Um, I'm sure there are much better explanations out there that you could look up if you are so confused. The last thing we will need is a render target view. And this is just for where we are going to be rendering our uh, buffer to. In our case, we are just going to have one render target view and it's going to be for our window. Now, if you see, we currently have pointers for all of these. And the old way of doing it was you would call in these functions and pass in the addresses to these pointers. And the function would populate them. And when you were done, you'd have to call release on all of these objects and manage it yourself. However, now we have com pointers. So what we can do instead is we can include WL. Uh, WRL slash client. And what this will allow us to do is use com pointers. 
in COM pointers, they basically work like smart pointers for COM objects. Let's go down and create our initialize and initialize DirectX definitions. For now, initialize, we'll just call initialize DirectX and return false if it fails, otherwise it will return true. In the future, after we initialize DirectX, this is where we could initialize our shaders, initialize the scene, and whatever else might be needed. The first step for initializing DirectX would be something like creating our device and swap chain. If we were to go and do this, you'd see that the very first, well first you'd see that there is a lot of arguments for this. And the very first argument is a IDXGI adapter. Now DXGI stands for D, uh, DirectX Graphics Infrastructure. And you might be wondering, what is this adapter object? Let's take a look at the documentation. Now according to the documentation, this is a pointer to the video adapter to use when creating a device. So it's our graphics card. We can pass in null to use a default adapter, which is the first one that we will get back when we are enumerating adapters. The only thing is, the first adapter might not be the one that we want to use. Determining the best adapter to use can be a little tricky, but what we will do is probably just use the adapter with the highest amount of memory and assume that that is the best one. In that case, before we can create our device and swap chain, we are going to make something so that we can get back all of our adapters. On this computer, for this example, I only have one adapter, so it's not the best example, but it might be different on your computer, especially if you're on a laptop. We're going to create a new class for reading in the adapters. We're going to call this adapter reader. In the adapter reader header, we are including AirLogger, D3D11. We are linking to our original libraries. We also need to link to DXGI because we are using functions from the DXGI library, like for creating the factory. And we are using COM pointers, so we include client. We are using vectors, so we need to include that. The way that it will work is first we will have this adapter data class, and we can always add more to this later. But for now, the adapter data class will just take in a pointer to the adapter. It will store that. And it will also store the adapter description, which, which tells us things like the graphics card name and how much memory it has and other things like that. The adapter reader class for now is just going to have a static function for getting the adapter data. And then we are storing a static vector of the adapters. Now the reason I chose to have this be static is because if you had two windows so that you had to call this twice, I didn't want to um, have to do it all twice. You know, once we do it once, I figure we can just return that vector and that should be good to go. Let's create our CPP for adapter reader. And before we get into the adapter reader CPP, let's go back to show all files at the top. And we are going to move adapter reader CPP in the header up to our graphics folder. Now let's uncheck show all files. Back in our graphics header, we need to include adapter reader. And we are going to take out the other includes and where we are linking to our libraries because adapter reader already does this. So let's go back into our adapter reader CPP and get this set up. First, you will see we just have uh, this definition for our static vector. If you've never used a static member inside of a class, you have to define them. So this is just defining that member. For get adapter data, if the adapter's vector has already been initialized, so if there's at least one object inside of it, then we are just going to return that vector. Otherwise, we have to enumerate the adapters. Now to do that, we have to create a, 
a graphics interface for a factory. And this is how you do that. You call it create the XVI factory. And this is kind of a weird syntax, but that's just how it works. I'll be going to specify what kind of cast this is. And if you notice, I'm calling get address of on this com pointer object. You can call get to get the actual pointer value and then get address of to get the address to the pointer value. This is needed because a lot of these functions, like this one for example, will take an address to that pointer so that they can populate that object. Now you'll see IntelliSense cannot find air logger and that's because I need to change the path to that file. So let's go back up to adapter reader header. And instead of going to air logger, we need to go up one directory. So, whoops. Should be able to put yep, two periods to go up a directory and then to air logger. Let's go back to the adapter reader CPP. So if we fail to create the DXGI factory, we're going to call log from our air logger, pass in the H result, and then put failed to create and then exit with a negative one exit code. Otherwise, we need to go through and enumerate through these adapters. So the way that it works is, when we are enumerating the adapters, we pass in the index of the adapter we are looking at, and then we pass in the ad an address to a pointer to fill in that adapter. And we use this succeeded macro to see if there actually is an adapter in that index. And if there is an adapter in that index at the end, you see we are incrementing it for the next check. If we do find an adapter, we are pushing it back in our vector and calling the constructor. Now the constructor down here for our adapter data, what it is going to do is it is going to call get disk to get the description. We are passing in an address uh, to our DXGI adapter description. And if it failed, we are just logging the error. Other than the syntax, it should be pretty straightforward on what it does. I mainly created this because I didn't want to clutter the graphics class with all this ugly code. Back to the graphics CPP. We can get the data. Equals adapter reader. Get adapter data. And I'm actually going to rename that just to say get adapters. So that's really, we are getting all the adapters. Let's see, get adapters, back in the CPP, get adapters. Before we can test this, we have to add the graphics class to our window container. So we're going to include graphics, graphics header create a graphics object, I'm going to call it GFX. In our engine.cpp, we are going to add this into the initialize. So first, we're going to say if the render window failed to initialize, then we are going to return false. If the graphics fails to initialize, We will return false, otherwise we will return true. Now one of the things the graphics class needed when it's being initialized is a handle to our window, which we do not currently have a way to get that. Let's go to the render window header. We are going to add a way to get that handle. It's going to call it get hwnd. We're going to return the handle. Back in our engine CPP, we can just call render window get handle. And there we go. So if we go to the graphics CPP and we put a breakpoint, let's test this out and see what we get back for our adapters. Okay, so we get a size of one because I only have one graphics card. And we have 
in our first index, we have the pointer to the adapter, which doesn't really tell us much. But then we have the description, which has things like uh, the name of the graphics card, vendor ID, device ID, uh, how much RAM the graphics card has, the shared system memory, I'm not 100% sure on what that is, but or what that is used for. But what's important here is we can look at the dedicated video memory, and if you have more than one graphics card, you can determine which one to use. For now, I'm just going to use the very first graphics card I get back, as long as I get one, just because yeah, that should be very easy to implement for you. Plus, we could always change that later if we wanted to. I don't want this tutorial to drag on too long, so that is all that we are going to cover for right now. In the next tutorial, we will be creating our device and swap chain, and then just rendering a color to the screen.